Hello everyone, this is Dr. Dan from Access Analog, and today we're going to go through another one of the version 7 features. This one is specifically called Upload from DAW. And for those people that have been around for a while, you'll know that that's a feature that's been around since version 5. In this case, it's a little bit enhanced because we now have access to our cloud storage. So I'm going to break this video into two pieces. One is a basic usage, and then the second one is an advanced usage. In the basic usage, the key is I've got our plugin on a single stem or a master bus. In other words, there are no other tracks that I need to coordinate with or sync with. So in this mode, I've got my audio playing, sounds great, I got the cream set up uh, exactly the way I like it, and I'm ready to do my bounce. So I'm going to stop, I'm going to remove the tagler, and now I'm going to go into the source. And in past videos, uh, specifically the enhanced offline video, I showed you how to do a drag and a drop to get a file to our server, or you can go directly to the location of the file and then upload it that way. But in this case, it's easier for my workflow if I can just upload it directly from my DAW. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button, Upload Audio. I'm going to press this here, and you'll notice now it says Waiting for Playback. Then I go to my DAW. I press playback. We create an auto-generated file name. You'll see that it's uploading. And as soon as it completes, this file will be done and we'll see the waveform. There we go. So that means that that file has two things have happened. One, it got uploaded to our cloud storage and saved to a disk drive. And second, it's now in the server's memory. Being that it's in the server's memory, we set the audio source to server files because we assume from here you want to do a bounce, and the only way you can do a bounce is by having the server files as your audio source. Another feature that's really nice, I can pull back in my Tegeler. By the way, I, I talked to the CEO of Tegeler, and he told me that's exactly how to say the name. I didn't know how before. Now I can play this, but you'll note if I do this, we're now playing audio, not from the DAW, but from our server. So now you can set the cream in a way if you want, just some final tweaks just to make sure it's exactly the way you want it. But I want to make sure everyone understands you're now playing the audio from the server directly. All right. Another quick feature I want to show is this transmit format. I specifically set it at compressed. A few people have been confused and asked us on the support chat, and they said, well, I don't want to use transmit format as compressed because then when I do the arm capture or the upload audio, it's going to be in a compressed format, and that's not true. In this case, when we capture your audio from playback, we're going to capture it at the sample rate your DAW is set at. For me, I use 44 1K, and we're going to use 24 bits. So it is as pristine as we can get it. We guarantee that that's then uploaded to our server and stored that way. Okay, great. I, I'm going to assume you know how to do a bounce because you've been watched the enhanced offline. So now I'm going to show you one other feature associated with this, and I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to disconnect. Let's say that you had everything set up, you did your bounce, but now you've come up with a better idea and you want to go back, but you don't want to have to capture that file again. I want to show you this circle arrow with the watch hands. That means recent files. So you'll notice that file that we re just captured is now in this list. We list up to 10 files here, so the most recent 10 files are going to be listed. I can click it from there, and now you're going to get that file not from your DAW, but it's going to come directly from the cloud storage. You just have to remember the time that that was captured, and now you're ready to go back to your cream and then do the bounce again if you wanted to, or you could play again. There you go. So that's the simple way to use this new feature, Upload Audio. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reconfigure my DAW for multiple tracks and then explain how this works when you capture audio and you want it to be in sync with the other tracks in your DAW. All right, my reconfigure is complete. And what I've got now, I've got three tracks. I've got a lead vocal and then two background vocals. I'm going to put our plug-in on the first lead vocal. I've got the LA-2A, which is, if you don't know, a great piece of gear for vocals. Playing it. It's all good. Everything is the way I want it set up, and I'm ready to do a bounce. 
I'm going to go to my source. And the beginning part of this is the same as part one of this video, the easy. I say upload audio. It's waiting for playback. I'm going to press the play. Again, we get the file name uh, that's going to be preloaded. You just have to remember the time in case you want to use that again. And I'm going to let it go all the way to complete. And then I'm going to talk about a couple things. All right, so now you've got a file. And in this case, it's a stereo file, even though this was a mono track. I'll explain that in a minute. Again, you get server files since we're assuming that you want to do a bounce. So this auto switches to server files. Now there's one important thing I want you to listen to. If I go here and play it, just like I did in part one of the video, where we're playing back from the server, can you hear how it's out of phase now? And the reason that is, is because we don't know that you have other tracks that this track needs to be synchronized. And that's why this checkbox is at the bottom. If you want to synchronize the server playback to what your DAW playback is, meaning that we would compensate for this buffer delay. All you need to do is check this box, and then when you play, well, it never takes long till they leave her. Now we're back in sync. So again, if you don't have it checked, never takes well, long till never they leave. then it's not, it's out of sync. So that's the main part that you need to take away from the second half of this video. If you've got multiple tracks and you want to play all of them together where our plugin is on one of the tracks or one of the stems, you just need to make sure you tell us to sync with the server so that we can sync with the other tracks and then you'll be good to go. That's it. It's a great feature. Uh, saves a lot in workflow. If there are any questions you have about it or anything that I left out, hit me up on the support chat. Would love to explain it and maybe I'll enhance this video. Otherwise, have a great day.